we can improve everything by 80% if we actually listened and tuned ourselves to this. Let's shift from nutrition. Let's talk about what were some of the other things that you got into when it came to addressing this feeling of over fatigue, being effing tired. What was another major category that you took on and you started to see results? Um, the biological rhythms piece, which is um, what we call chronobiology in um, the medical li literature. We have that clock that we referred to before, not only in our brains, but in every one of our cells. And then there's also this other clock. So we have circadian rhythms, which are 24, about 24 hour cycles. Then we have infradian rhythms, which are about 28 day cycles. And then there's ultradian rhythms, which are usually very short cycles. So that's like our heartbeat or our breath. And we are cyclical beings. We have to, as you know, controlling your breath and your heart rate is one of the best ways to control your energy, get into that parasympathetic state that um, counteracts a lot of our stress. So I realized that, hey, I was completely off on all three of those uh, rhythms and getting back on all of those was really transformative. So I talk a lot about that. So chronobiology is a piece for me that could change our society. So, you know, in the last 10 years, we have seen so much technology. I mean, we are sitting in a, you know, in a place that wouldn't be, have all this technology about, you know, 10, 20 years ago, cell phones, the, our lifestyles. So I believe that if clinicians, entrepreneurs, um, technology can match some of this chronobiology piece, we can be in a better state in a in a few years from now. So what that means is we're supposed to be seeing light during the day and food and certain there those light and food are the two biggest inputs. Light's the strongest one. And then we're supposed to be doing certain things at night, including sleeping and fasting um, and seeing darkness. And having that duality to our days has such an impact on our brain that we don't even understand. We anecdotally know it. Oh yeah, I feel good when I go out and get some sunlight, but there's very good evidence. I mean, the Nobel Prize in Medicine went to the uh, circadian rhythm science in I think 2000 night 17 and really what we're looking at is transformative practices not just things that are nice to have um, things that we can do for our culture for our population of working people for our parents for our children that could change the game honestly because up to 80 percent of our genes are controlled by circadian rhythm so we can improve everything by 80 percent if we actually listened and tuned ourselves to this and you know a thousand years ago that was easy we didn't have microwaves we didn't have cell phones and netflix and we were outdoors a lot because there was no choice but now the way because we've been blind to this knowledge we've built a society that completely ignores this um, and so i think that getting back to that in your personal state but then also on a societal level is something that can change people's lives what were some examples of the way that you were breaking that yeah. before you started getting the research? You know, uh, we were chatting earlier, you know, with you being um, with you being a doctor, naturally, even just the whole process of going through med school is a constant sort of barrage on that. And then when you get into your residency and then rotations and other stuff, you're doing overnight shifts, other things like that. It's kind of the way that the system is is built. And so you're almost designed on top of the work ethic and the heavy, heavy drive to achieve, which is also a beautiful thing. You probably wouldn't have gotten as far as you you do. And and some of that stress was a good thing, which you talk about. We'll, we'll get to that later yeah. on. But what were the ways that you were breaking that, that if you had to rank like the top couple, yeah. that then when you fixed it, you noticed a difference? So Drew, I think what we have to understand is you can break these clocks. They are breakable. So from constantly changing and not syncing with our circadian rhythms, we can break our clocks. And so that 
as we age, not only do our clocks become weaker, but now they're damaged. And so they can't do the regulation that they used to do and turn on and turn off genes. And so they're not, so basically you age quicker, you get more metabolic disease and you die earlier. So it's not just, uh, you know, yeah, in the short term, I'm talking about energy, but really in the long term, it's about longevity and health and disease. What I was doing was I had a horrible nighttime routine and I had a horrible morning routine. And I think a lot of people could relate to some of this nighttime routine. The kids would go to bed and I would make sure that they would go to bed. And then that's when I started everything. I would turn on the computer. There was a TV in the background. I would get my snacks and I would sit there late into the late night and study for my boards um, or study for the next day or you know study for something uh, or do something. And I would skimp on my sleep. I would get blast of blue light. So one bout of blue light delays your melatonin by 90 minutes. And then I would eat. Usually you're not making great decisions. Studies show that the decisions you make after 8 p.m. are usually not good food decisions. Well, not good decisions all around, but usually definitely not food, good food decisions. And then I would skimp on my sleep. I would get up and I would have like a blasting alarm to try to like wake me up in the morning and it would be pitch black often. And I would, you know, down my caffeine and my breakfast because, you know, you have to jumpstart your metabolism. Like if you don't eat first thing when you roll out of bed, you're I thought that you would not jumpstart your metabolism, which was, you know, the common misnomer, uh, the lie that we've been told by trainers over the years that if you're not constantly eating first thing in the morning and then all throughout the day that you're shortchanging your metabolism. And then I would um, quickly check my phone, um, email, and I would rush to work. And it was always like this big rush because what I wanted to do is like minimize the time, maximize my sleep time and minimize my morning time. So there was really no time to think. You just like raced off. And what I realized is that there was so much that I was doing wrong with that. Um, And my breakfast, you know, was this refined breakfast. It was bar and it was um, coffee or uh, tea or whatever it was. And so I really, really uprooted my entire routine. And I said, okay, now that I know this piece about chronobiology, about how these things work, I need to start incorporating little things and just simple things um, that I change made all the difference for me. So I I always tell people, if you take nothing away from the book, just fix your nighttime and morning routine and you will see amazing changes in your energy and your burnout levels. 